This is Twit. So uh, is uh, Microsoft getting rid of Edge, its three-year-old browser? Yes. No. <laughs> was that a yes? That was the no? big rumor. <laughs> that it's was the big, big rumor yes. of the week. <laughs> so um, we don't know for sure because it is still a rumor at this point, but Windows Central had a story this week saying Microsoft is building a Chromium powered web browser that will replace Edge on Windows 10. They say this thing is codenamed so. Anaheim. Um, and then if you read into the story, it gets a little more um, iffy because they then they say they're throwing in the towel with Edge HTML, which is the rendering engine, the fork of Microsoft's Trident, which was MS HTML that powers Edge. So the, it's unclear if they... Like the way they wrote the story, at first you're like, oh, they're getting rid of Edge. But then you're like, wait, maybe they're getting rid of the rendering engine in Edge and swapping yeah, I think, it out. Yeah, the problem is that they don't know themselves. And, right. <laughs> you know, but yeah. um, I, b based on logic and common sense, um, it seems like Microsoft is doing what they should have done all along, which is build a browser application off of a standards based, uh, popular. <laughs> rendering engine yeah. because that's not where the innovation needs to occur. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, unfortunately, you know, in the Microsoft world, in the Microsoft kind of fan base world, when you hear something like this, we immediately go into some sort of a suicidal dive because everyone's really <laughs> tired of Microsoft killing everything we love. But a couple things about Edge is uh, not many people love it. it it's barely used. It, it only registers somewhere in the 3% range usage worldwide. Um, and it, it, doesn't really kind of matter, honestly. It's I, I, I look at this kind of thing like um, the vestiges of Microsoft past. You know, I think that in Microsoft, mm -hmm. I think we, as fans, there are people who also believe this way that, you know, we, they've always done this kind of thing. They make their own browser. They make their own operating system. They have to innovate on these platforms. And it's like, this is not really what matters. And yeah. um, I this is a direct result, I think, of the whole... Uh, Satya Nadella change thing, you know, that, you know, partner where it makes sense, be open to everybody, be inclusive to all technologies um, and, you know, innovate where it makes sense yep. and innovating in a browser rendering engine that's only going to impact Windows 10 <laughs> makes no sense. I know. So do you, re do you remember when they came out with um, Edge? It was codenamed Spartan. And yep. I remember when they first talked about it, I'm like, so what's the rendering engine? And they're like, it's brand new. Like, it's something totally new. And I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. but what is it? Yep. Right? And right. and finally, I got them to say it was a fork of MSHTML. I'm like, oh, so it's Trident. And they're like, no, that's what we don't want people to say. We don't want them to say we're using yep. our rendering engine. But I'm like, and yeah, but you you're not an using... E logo? Right, you know, and you're not using If you don't blink. want people to associate <laughs> it with the old thing, don't make right. it look exactly like the old thing. No, you know why they did that, right? Like no, the I real didn't. reason, because yeah. well, a want... lot of people like my mom, they don't even know what a browser is. She calls it E. She's like, e. I'll have to say to her, go to the E, which is Internet Explorer and oh. now Edge. So they kept the E for that. That's why. That's the real reason. No, I, yeah. No, I know. And it makes sense. It's a muscle memory. Thing. I get, I get <laughs> yeah. that. But um, anyway, I, 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 I view this as just incredibly smart. And the right thing to do, overdue, one would say. Um, yeah. If you go back to that time period you were just talking about when Microsoft was talking about this thing as if it were an all new thing, they were very briefly going to put it, uh, this rendering engine in the version of IE that shipped with Windows 10 and then later decided mm -hmm. not to for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I, I'm sure I'll have to, I should take this up. I know at the time I said they should not do this. This is stupid. <laughs> Nobody needs this. Nobody wants this. Um, it's it's just like some weird platform imperative from a group that can't get beyond the fact that this is not what matters anymore. And yeah. um, I think finally this change we're seeing across Microsoft is starting to hit the Windows group. And uh, I think, was it last week or two weeks ago when I, off the cuff, this was not something in the notes or something we planned to talk about, but we were talking about whatever. And I said, you know, Microsoft should just stop worrying about this core OS development stuff, base Windows on Linux, ship the user <laughs> experience everyone expects on top of that, and uh, let it run Windows apps, you know? And who would care? Like your mother. She would never know. It looked just like Windows. It would no. be Windows. Right. And, you know, that thing that makes Windows Windows is the ability to run Windows applications, you know? Yeah. And uh, there's no indication of doing that. It's just an idea I had off the... It probably makes no <laughs> sense. It doesn't really matter. But the point is, yeah. this is the same kind of thing ap applied to the browser. 
mm-hmm. you know, focusing on what matters, the user experience, right? And not focusing on what doesn't matter, a rendering engine. It's silly. Right. This has been solved. So uh, when this happened, when this rumor came out from Windows Central, like everyone's pinging you and me and they're like, oh my God, you guys are going to like flip out. And I'm like, no, I, if this <laughs> nope. makes Edge work for me, mm-hmm. I don't care what they do under the covers, right? Like the reason I can't use Edge is yep. many of the websites I use in my browser don't work with Edge. And I know I've yep. seen all the telemetry from Microsoft that says Edge is the fastest, it's the best, it's the most compatible, it's this, it's that. Try loading <laughs> Edge, try loading tweetdeck.com in Edge on a lower yep. powered machine like the Surface Go. It's a no go. No, not happening. The other thing is <clears throat> the other complaint you kind of hear around along those lines is that <clears throat> excuse me, that um you know, Microsoft is kind of giving up something that right. users want or need or whatever. And the reality is if they deliver this thing, that it, it looks like Edge. It could be called Edge. We don't know what it's going to be called, but let's pretend it's just called Edge. It's if they had be told edge, anybody. Right? Well, I we know so it'll too. start with an E at the very least. <clears throat> yeah. I would, well, I would uh, assume. Yeah. <laughs> with some evidence, maybe they should walk away from that. But um, whatever. They, I, honestly, that doesn't matter. You know, it, I think it would be very interesting... You know, it'd be like the Project Mojave thing. You could just hand it to someone. They say, yeah, I could use this. This is great. Like, yeah, it's Chrome. Okay. Yep. <laughs> like, who cares? Who I cares know. what it is? Or the, the kind of monoculture complaint we hear from people who That's say, well, the big oh, one. great. Great. <laughs> yeah, oh, great. And th- this is a complete misconception. And, um, you know, I, I think I had this conversation with you earlier, but uh, Mary Jo, but, yeah. um, you know, you can use words to make something sound good or make something sound bad. And so one of the words you might use is monoculture because that sounds terrible. I would use the word uh, standard, you know, know, that instead of a bunch of different browsers doing things in slightly different ways, outscoring each other slightly in different standardized, you know, uh, web tests, rendering certain pages differently, <coughs> poorly right. or better in some cases, it would be better if that stuff just worked the yep. same way everywhere. Yeah. <clears throat> and with Blink and Blink slash, I, I, I call it more like Blink slash WebKit as kind of a standard mm-hmm for this kind of thing. Microsoft can do what it should have been doing all along in innovating with the application itself. Yep. And on the but OS you know, side with OS integration features that make sense that don't, it, it, it shouldn't matter what the right, rendering engine is. Right. But you know, this whole monoculture, <laughs> um, what would you call it? Not diatribe, but like the whole argument yeah. around, you know, the reason that Microsoft didn't want to use that, that same WebKit slash blank rendering engine was because you should have multiple implementations of a standard. And that's what keeps a standard a standard. They were the ones who pushed that argument. They like Microsoft well, was right. the one who got that in everybody's <clears throat> head. Right. <clears throat> right. It, but it wasn't like some right. random people thinking it. <laughs> of course. In, in the same way that Apple fans will kind of parrot things that Apple says on stage or whatever. Yeah, it makes sense that Microsoft fans would do the same too. That this yeah. idea got in their head somewhere, you know. Right. Um, a, a monopoly is terrible when you don't own the monopoly. Uh, mm-hmm. We need to fight the monopoly, <laughs> you know. But again, yeah. I, I, I look. I'm on board with the whole monopoly is a terrible thing, I guess. But right. that's not right. what this is about. No one is making money from a rendering engine, right? There's no right. insidious backroom, you know, machination that's occurring that yeah. m- m- makes. You know, Google make money from Blink. Mm-hmm. Um, right. It, it's yeah. this is it's not. I realize it's not literally an open standard, but it is what I guess I would call a de facto standard, and it's mm-hmm. not where innovation needs to occur. It's not. Right. I agree. Um, the thing I wonder, and again, because this is a rumor and we don't know at this point, where you have to just kind of guess is what. Okay, so you have to look at who is this bad for? If it's bad for anyone, like, is it bad for the industry? Is it bad for developers? Yeah. Is it bad for users? The only group there I'm kind of wondering about is developers. And I don't think there are that well, many people who built apps or sites like optimized Like HTML for Edge. apps or whatever. <laughs> right? But well, uh, there is a, there, I mean, remember one of the big parts of the store platform now, the store app platform is these, what used to be called a, a different, I forget the, the previous name for this, but there was a, a web app type that could be in the store and now we have progressive web apps, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, these things are, web apps are kind of held up as, an, as a way for you to write a thing that runs kind of everywhere, mm-hmm. uh, especially if you do it correctly. And honestly, that type of app, I would say in particular, becomes better um, yeah. if there's a standard rendering engine, if we're just using Chrome, right? Because now you know the thing you're going to put in the store is going to look the same on the web. If someone pins it mm-hmm. with Chrome on the Mac or whatever, this web app kind of works the same everywhere. 
-hmm. So there might be some short-term pain for developers who have to take existing apps that are based on web technologies in the store. Test them again. And then redo them, yeah. you know, for the Chrome engine. But uh, I, I said, like, I don't mean to be a jerk about this. I, I, I think that developers win overall by far. I think it's a no-brainer. Mm. That said... Well, going, if, going forward for sure, right? Because... Every, yeah, then you're it, writing to one thing. <laughs> yeah, but even, right. But if you have to uh, make life painful for one group, right, in the Hill Lake system, mm. it has to be developers. It has to be. They're the ones that are going to have to do the hard work because they're few in number. They only target a couple of different things, relatively speaking, to the world. You don't make it hard on users. You don't make it hard on businesses. <laughs> you know, you, you make it hard on, on developers. Again, not to be a jerk on, about oh. it, but I mean, that's that's the lot in life there. I oh. mean, that's... Paul, developers, 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 <laughs> developers, developers. No, I, I, but again, just saying. But I think most developers, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Steve Ballmer. But I think most <laughs> developers hearing this would agree that this will make their life better in the long run. And that's what makes it worthwhile. Mm. Well. Yeah. Again, if any of this happens, so far, this is I do have a lot. I do have a <laughs> lot of is. writing on this actually working. Um, <laughs> That was me channeling my inner Steve Ballmer. A little less sweaty. Yeah. Than, uh, a little less yeah. sweaty. But yeah, I um, uh, I mean, you know, again, from user standpoint, this is a win. For Microsoft, it's a win. This is a thing like Microsoft has been pumping engineering effort and dollars and time yeah. into developing something that doesn't matter. Right. I, literally, literally doesn't matter in the slightest to the success of the platform. Zero. Yeah. This is an effort they can just give up. Mm -hmm. And plus, I think it goes nicely with the whole inclusivity thing that um, Satya Nadella preaches and Microsoft follows. You know, that it's it's going to be a good citizen and a partner mm. with, what, with whatever partners, you know, with uh, open yeah. source, with whatever. And I, uh, I still, I, in my, you know, again, I, a lot of people think of me as incredibly negative. I, I have this almost Pollyanna kind of thing going on with a lot of technology. I have a, a firm belief, despite zero evidence to, to, to this effect and plenty of evidence to the contrary, that Google and Microsoft can somehow have a better relationship and that things like this are how they get there. Yeah, and uh, you, you do have that weird idea that I these know. two are going to be friends one day. I know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a kind of a sunny sky kind of guy. <laughs> Yeah, that's not you, but <laughs> that's not the Paul Thorat I know. Um, but I, I'm more of a skeptic on that than you are. I'm like, no, nah, I think they're still enemies. I don't think they're yeah. friends. But I, I, but you know, a lot of times um, uh, competition has an interesting way of getting companies to work together. Uh, yeah. To those other competitors, you know, and you see interesting tie-ups. Uh, Microsoft and Amazon tying up over Alexa is ooh, what. Yeah, I, I mean, know. You, you kind of have to look at that and say, if that could happen. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You know, that's true. Anything's possible. Yeah. There's that's an opportunity, uh, and again, zero evidence for this to happen, but an opportunity for something to happen with Windows that should have happened a long time ago as well, which is to get Android apps running on Windows, you know? And if mm. they base this thing on Chrome, Chrome OS runs Android. I know it's crazy. It's crazy. Um, yeah. but again, I believe 